Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. This video discusses the editorial analysis for the date 3rd September. Displayed here are the list of two important editorial articles that we would be discussing from Indian Express and the Hindu. The article titled The Monsoon Comfort talks about the importance of Indian monsoons when it comes to Indian agriculture and how policies and uh, price selections of the products especially food items need to be enhanced and changed uh, in reference to the changing patterns of the monsoon of India. And next article titled Limited Access to Mental Health Care Despite Rising Demand discusses on the importance of mental health care uh, system into the Indian health care and how holistically it is important to seek in or bring in increasing the psychiatrist professionals to address mental health issues in our Indian population as there is a high demand. Now without any much further delay let's get into the articles discussion one by one along with the mains practice question. Before that there's a few announcements. Pre-storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 are starting from the 6th September of 2024 for the batch 1. Along with it to boost your UPSC mains preparation with us All India UPSC mains open mock test 2024. 24 are conducted so interested students can apply for the test series moving on to the first editorial article titled limited access to mental health care despite the rising demand for a country like india the need for mental health care is growing but the availability of mental health professionals has not kept up with the demand so first let us see a mains practice question in accordance to this topic Discuss the current state of mental health in India, uh, highlighting the key challenges faced in providing mental health care. Evaluate the effectiveness of government initiatives in addressing these challenges and suggest measures to improve mental health services in country. Now let us see a holistic point of view to answer this question and having a framework. I also appreciate students to have their answer in the comment section for this question. Now let us see what is mental health. Mental health refers to an overall well-being of an individual's emotional, psychological and social aspects and how this aspects influence on how we think, feel and act in front of others as well as for ourselves. For a country like India, mental health care is a very neglected topic but although awareness has been increasing in the recent years. Now let us move on to the current status of mental health in India. According to the National Mental Health Survey of 2015-16, to nearly 14% of the India's population suffers from various mental health disorders such as stress, depression, anxiety and other severe conditions like the schizophrenia and bipolar disorders and so on. In India, mental illness is highly stigmatized which leads to discrimination and reluctance to seek help even from our immediate family members and friends which can ultimately lead to social exclusion. Next is when it comes to resources, there is very inadequate ability of mental health professionals. According to the WHO, there is a need for three prof psychiatrist professionals per one lakh population. But, but for a country like India, it is, it is just almost 0.75 psychiatrists present for one lakh population. And also a recent report in 2023 by the Parliamentary, Parliamentary Standing Committee, there are almost 9,600 psychiatrist professionals in India and the focus is to re uh, increase to 36,000 psychiatrist professionals in order to meet this demand by the WHO. Thus to meet this demand, it would almost take 27 years in a country like India. So looking at the current uh, status, we need to have mental health interpretation in India. Now let us look into the few government initiatives. First is the National Mental Health Program. It was launched in 1982 to provide mental health services and to integrate them into general health care. Thus, it is seen as the most normal thing. It also includes district mental health programs where there is decentralization of mental health care and also it includes district level participation. Next is the Mental Health Care Act of 2017. This landmark legislation was replaced by the Mental Health Care Act of 1987. Here it recognizes mental health care as a right and it ensures access to services and decriminalizes suicide where a person when they attempt suicide it can be assumed that they attempted due to stress, depression and so on and instead of providing punishment, they are provided with care and rehabilitation. Next is the Kiran helpline under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. It is a toll-free helpline for mental health supporters by providing support to uh, individuals who are in distress. Next is the Monodarpan initiative under the Atmanirbar Bharat Abhyan. It is an initiative to provide psychological support during 
covid especially for student teachers and the families involved and next is the portion abhiyan initially it was nutrition and health scheme but now it also addresses mental health needs of pregnant women lactating mothers and children as well now let us look at the challenges when it comes to mental health first is the stigma and having a very less awareness stigma to even accept that we are having depression and stress is such a task and even after accepting for us to have awareness on it is very less when it comes to a country like india next is the infrastructure and workforce there are very less uh, inadequate facilities and professionals as we did see the report from the last slide this can hinder both the population which needs mental health care and at the same time it can hinder the growth of mental health care professionals in a scenario like india next is the access and affordability there are limited availability and high cost of treatment even though among working population it is very less people who can afford sessions when it comes to therapy and imagine when students or children are into depression and stress and so on it is a question for them to even afford it Next is integration with the primary health care. There are gaps in early detection and treatment. Thus, a policy intervention is a dire need. And finally, the data collection and research. There are very limited data and insufficient research which can hinder the policy interventions to change into social action. Now, let us see a way forward to these. First is to enhancing awareness and reducing stigma. Having a national wide campaigns from offline as well as in online through social media. People might get more exposed to what mental health is in a country like India uh, through simple language so that they are able to understand. Next is the strengthening of infrastructure. There is a need for increased funding and facilities. Also, this can lead to research and data collection where there are investment in research and it can enhance the improved data collection through the funding and so on. For example, public-private partnership programs and so on. Next is integrating mental health into primary care, bringing training healthcare providers and having a policy legislative reforms such as the implementation of mental health care as the society changes, of course, the act, any act should be changed according to the needs of the people as this generation is a mix of both millennials and Gen Z's who are equally into the workforce. Thus, to address their stress anxiety is very important even for an economy like India. And next is the community-based interventions that is the involvement of NGOs, community leaders, scholars and so on. Next is to have a telemedicine and a digital platforms. Utilization of technology is very important here as we are moving into the uh, world of digitalization. Initiatives like the digital public infrastructure in agriculture, there should also be a digital public infrastructure when it comes to mental health care. So, there is a unified platform for all the data and so on. And finally is to focus on vulnerable groups a special focus on children adolescents elderly and those affected by poverty violence and displacement need to be given attention because in present geopolitics there are a lot of wars happening which leads to migration displacement and a lot of unsaid stress anxiety traumas and so on especially women so looking at the way forward we can see how there is a need for mental health care program as well as it integrating with the larger goals of indian health sector in itself now looking into the last editorial titled monsoon comfort the context is india has received 7.5 percentage of more rainfall than usual during the monsoon season and with july and august it is seeing even higher surpluses of 9 percentage and 15.5 3 percentage. Thus, this has led the government to ease some restrictions that were put in place and control for inflation, particularly for food items. Before that, now let us discuss uh, mains practice question so that in order we can see how the article is how the article discusses on how monsoon is impacting when it comes to a country like India. Discuss the implications of failure of monsoon on the Indian economy and agricultural sector. How can government mitigate these impacts? Now let us look a framework according to this. Look Looking into the government policy adjustment, when it comes to ethanol production, the ban on producing ethanol, which is a type of biofuel directly from sugarcane, juice, syrup or molasses has been lifted. This aims to ensure adequate sugar supply and there is stabilization of prices due to the increase of monsoon. To give an overview, ethanol is an alternative fuel made from crops like sugarcane where there is plenty of crop, the government might allow its use in producing ethanol. The government had previously restricted this to ensure that there was enough sugar and rice for people to eat but with a good monsoon, they believe there will be enough for both purposes. 
Now looking into the export restrictions, for example, it is considering that lifting the ban on exporting white non-basmati rice has been placed in since 2023 in July. The export restrictions are rules that limit how much of a certain product can be sold to other countries. The government sometimes uses these to keep enough food within the country or to control prices. However, if uh, there is too much of product like rice or sugar, lifting these restrictions can help farmers sell their surplus abroad and can boost economy through the income generation. Now, let us see the impact of monsoon on Indian agriculture. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, it regularly publishes reports on crop production which shows over 50% of the India's net sown rain area is rain fed. Thus, crops like rice, coarse cereals, pulses and oil seeds are heavily dependent on monsoon rains. Next is ensuring food security and crop yields. The National Food Security Mission focuses on the variability, monsoon variability which can affect food production leading to concerns over food security. Strategies like the crop diversification and irrigation development are emphasized to mitigate the risk uh, posed by the monsoon failures. Next is the water resources and rural development. The Central Water Commission reports on river basin management which indicate that monsoon rains are essential for uh, replenishing the groundwater levels and maintaining reservoir storage which directly impacts water irrigation and water availability in the rural areas especially. And when it comes to economic impact, the RBI's annual report and economic reviews highlight the link between monsoon performance and India's GDP growth. A normal monsoon season typically uh, leads to better agricultural output and it can lower inflation and it affects the overall economic stability. Just to have a small overview, monsoon refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during a year. The climate of India is described as monsoon type. The monsoon type of climate is characterized by distinct seasonal pattern. The weather conditions greatly change from one season to other. Uh, four main seasons can be identified in India, which is the cold weather season, the hot weather season, the advancing monsoon and retreating monsoon with some regional variety variations. The cold weather season is from mid-November to February in northern India and December and January are the coldest months. Hot weather season is from March to May. Advancing monsoon that is the rainy season is from early June with the arrival of southwest monsoon and the retreating or the post monsoon that is the transition season is from October to November. Now let us see the steps to reduce the dependency on monsoon. First is to have an irrigation schemes. The Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana ensures to access to irrigation and improve water use efficiency. For example, under the accelerated irrigation benefits program, irrigation projects are prioritized, which is also known as AIBP. Next is the crop contingency planning. To mitigate the impact of delayed monsoon or drought on crops, uh, these plans guide states in taking timely actions like alternative crops, adjusting the sowing dates based on the rainfall patterns. Next is women empowerment. To increase the women empowerment, uh, Mahila Kisan Shashanti Karan Pariyojana scheme empowers women farmers through improved agro agronomic practices which includes water conservation techniques next is creating creation of water harvesting structure to capture and store rainwater for irrigation and other uses water harvesting structures have been constructed or rejuvenated under various schemes like the mandrega here it helps farmers to maintain water availability even in periods of low rainfall and next is the water uh, watershed development component of the pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. Here it focuses to improve water conservation and management in rain fed areas. These projects help in capturing and storing rainwater, thus, it reduces the reliance on the monsoon rain. I hope I have given a holistic view on uh, addressing the issue of monsoon and Indian agriculture. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment, and a share. And to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.